All right, so let's talk dyslexia. In the United States alone, 5 to 10% of the population have dyslexia. Dyslexia affects read, writing, spelling, as well as speech. I don't write letters backwards. The usual person thinks that dyslexia means that you write letters backwards, or you're a bad speller, or that you're a little bit dumb. In general, we just think different. We usually come up with out-of-the-box ideas because of the way we think. I want to make another video on dyslexia and explain some of the positives and talk about the more recognized people that are extremely smart, yet they have dyslexia. Now here are about six difficulties people with dyslexia have. So I myself am affected by those six things. One is reading in public or reading out loud. This one affects me tremendously, not only at work, which I always say no when I need to read anything, but I have a small child and reading a book to him, even though it's a very simple kid's book, I do have to do the pausing and reread a few words. I'm tired of using my aging eyes as an excuse that I can't read that well, but I wouldn't want my son to think his dad is not as great as he thinks. And this brings us to the second sign of dyslexia, which is slow reading and writing. It takes long for me to read, it takes long for me to write, especially reading subtitles in movies or TV shows. This drives me completely nuts. It's really frustrating when I'm trying to watch something and then there's a subtitle, which means I have to read and I know I'm not going to be able to read the whole thing before the subtitle changes. So I try to rush through it and I didn't capture anything. So I go back, I skim through it and then I try to reread it, but it's long gone. And that's kind of the same with reading anything else as well, because it's just hard. If, if I'm not 100% into an article or a book or even an email, it's hard to sit through and try to read to really know what you're reading. Sometimes I read so fluidly that I think, wow, I just read this whole paragraph without pausing, without having to reread. But then I think, what did I just read? 90% of it didn't register. So yeah. And writing also, choosing the right words to use when I'm writing, it's one of the difficulties. Especially when I'm on a time crunch, coming up with words to write, it's very hard. Now the third sign of dyslexia, which is spelling. I know how to spell, I know how to read, but there are the occasional words that are common but I just can't remember how to spell. Like the word definitely. I use it almost every day, maybe every other day. I write the word definitely on emails or when I'm talking, but I never write it correctly. And each time I see how it's spelled, I'm like, oh, okay, simple enough. I try to write it again the next day or whenever, and I can't remember as well as upper and lower case spelling. I used to think people with dyslexia type upper and lower cases until I realized that they are talking about handwriting. And I look back at my handwriting and as a matter of fact, I'm looking at the notes I wrote for this video. And yeah, I have E's that are upper and lower case, like the word several. I have one capital E and one lowercase E. So yeah. Now, number four, difficulty planning and organizing. Now, this is one that affects me professionally. And the reason I say that is because at work, I do have difficulty sometimes writing an email and choosing the correct words. I may sound a bit rude or way too playful, or even if the subject is not really associated with what I'm writing. Thoughts and expression kind of don't really mix well. I have difficulty expressing my thoughts in writing as well as speech. Now let's jump to the fifth one. Difficulty memorizing. We usually have great long-term memory for experiences, location, and faces. But the difficulty comes with sequences, facts, and things that we didn't really experience ourselves. Or especially if we don't find relatable. Now this is the last one in this video, but this is the one that affects me the most. Speaking. Difficulty retrieving the right words that I need to use at the moment, causing pauses, and using less optimal words, or substituting words that I intend to use but I just don't remember. Oftentimes, instead of saying the correct word, we end up saying stuff, or things, or that person. Now, a good example of the speaking difficulties that I have 
is noticeable by this video. I do cut a lot. I do pause a lot. My problem with retrieving the right word to use is very evident in this video. If you notice, I do a lot of cut from one scene to another. I'm, I'm like a little bit different position. And that's because I'm cutting. Sometimes I, I pause for like a minute and I'm trying to figure out what word to use. And I know this is not just a dyslexia thing because I know a lot of YouTubers have difficulty coming up with words because they're in front of a camera. But I have the same difficulties coming up with words as I do when I'm talking out of camera. For example, this is the fourth time I filmed this whole video and the fourth time I attempt to edit. Each time that I take it to DaVinci Resolve and try to edit the video, I spent hours doing it and then I get just frustrated and I just refilm because it's painstaking. <laughs> anyway, stay tuned. I want to make more videos like this. I want to talk more about dyslexia and ADHD. If you find this video informative or helpful in any way, please like the video. And if you want to subscribe for future videos.